The January 2015 Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame was an absolute blast. It's commonly referred to as Duos Alliance format, and many to this day still consider it among the best the game has ever seen. It was fun, interactive, skillful, and packed with unique mechanics and decks to choose from. I'm not saying it was perfect because everyone hated that dreaded Necroz Genlock, but it was still a really good time. With a story during this format, you probably expect the topic to be Burning Abyss or maybe one of the dual terminal archetypes like Necroz or Shadows. And don't worry, I'll get to those in due time. But today, I want to discuss the incredibly powerful deck that basically never was. A deck that probably could have won a YCS championship, but was never even given the chance to. This is the story of Dark Matter Dragon Rulers, the tier 1 deck that was legal for less than 2 weeks in the TCG. We all know how powerful the earth shattering Duos Alliance booster set was, and how archetypes like Shadows and Burning Abyss were so far ahead of the past competition, they basically power creeped everything prior to them right out of the metagame. Soon after, Konami would follow that up with powerhouses like the New Challengers and the Secret Forces. These sets released juggernauts like Necroz, Cleaford, and Ritual Beast into the meta mix. The format was solidified, and we knew the next core boost set Crawl Souls was going to be fairly mediocre and bring almost nothing to the table in terms of affecting the competitive meta. However, there was something interesting brewing in the OCG. We all know how insanely strong the legendary dragon rulers were during the Zexo era, but by the beginning of Arc V, they had fallen on some very hard times and completely out of competitive play. It wasn't that they weren't good themselves, but more so Konami and the OCG and TCG had hammered so many of their key cards into the ground. It was flat out hard to make them work. For one, Dragon Ravine was completely banned in the TCG, and on the OCG side of things, it wasn't much better with Ravine being limited to one, as well as the commonly played Dragon Shrine also being limited. Luckily, however, the Dragon Rulers were going to find one of their biggest catalysts ever for success, and it was going to come from a very unlikely source. In Konami's ongoing attempt to complete the number collection, they released number 95 Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon and the Premium Pack 17 in the OCG. The pack premiered in late December 2014 at the Jump Festa event held in Japan. The card itself was a gigantic boost to the Dragon Rulers as Dark Matter Dragon could send three of the four rulers to the graveyard instantly when summoned. As great as that was, it actually wasn't as good as it got. A little card named Eclipse Wyvern was also a perfect candidate to be sent from the deck to the graveyard because this would allow you to banish Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon from your deck and immediately add it to your hand when you banish Eclipse Wyvern to summon a Dragon Ruler. Quite frankly, the synergy between all these dragons was just off the charts, and to add even more absurdness, absolutely none of these powerful effects were hard once per turns. It might seem redundant to keep going on, but I really need to hammer just how broken this stuff was. Dark Matter Dragon could also send the rulers or wyvern to the graveyard as a cost, which meant cards like Breakthrough Skill and Effect Failure were completely useless to stop it. To add icing on the cake, Dark Matter Dragon also forced your opponent to banish three of their monsters from deck at the same time time, this effect was often devastating if used twice in the first turn because it would end up banishing six of your opponent's main deck monsters and really just decimate their deck. Last but certainly not least, 95 also had the ability to attack up to two monsters in any given battle phase which could easily be game ending because of its monstrous 4000 attack. I think it's pretty easy to see why many in the OCG essentially considered this guy a win condition. The only question was how would they summon him? Dark Matter Dragon was supposed to be a difficult monster to summon, being a rank 9 that needed 3 materials, but Konami foolishly gave us the ability to summon 95 using any number of the rank 8 Galaxy Eyes monsters. The Galaxy theme already benefited from this with Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Photon Dragon, but Dark Matter just pretty much took it to stupidly broken levels. OCG duelists got to work fast, crafting decks that could easily make the rank 8 Galaxy Galaxy Eyes Exceed monsters needed to summon 95, but they still needed to be fairly dragon based if they wanted to take advantage.
advantage of dumping three dragon rulers in the graveyard during the first turn. I believe that their creations were just going to be successful, but OCG players actually got a double boost of support that December. Just prior to the release of Dark Matter Dragon, Konami announced six erratas on very old DM anime banned cards. Among these was Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End. Seemingly out of nowhere, it appeared as if the card that had spent over a dozen years on the Forbidden list was finally about to be free. The newer version was of course incredibly weaker and its effect was far less powerful, but for this deck specifically, that wasn't important at all. Chaos Emperor Dragon was indeed released on the January 1st, 2015 OCG ban list and OCG duelists were pretty much off to the races. They ended up creating the very powerful Dark Matter Dragon Ruler deck, but there were actually two very different versions. First up was the Heratic Ruler build. This version offered huge damage and burst potential, as well as lots of inherent spot removal thanks to the Heratic monsters themselves, such as Heratic Sue and Nepdep. This version also had tons of room to just main deck spot removal cards like Mystical Space Typhoon and the newly unbanned Harpy's Feather Duster. Heratics had always been an offensively potent deck, but one might wonder how the archetype had any natural ability to go into rank 8 XC monsters when the deck was ranked 6 base. Well, that's where innovative deck building came in. OCG Duelist teched in copies of the seemingly random legendary Maju Garzette, but in actuality, it wasn't random at all. Garzette accomplished two things. Number one, it allowed the deck to easily get a level 8 monster on field, thus getting halfway to the rank 8 play. Number two, since Garzette tributed all your monsters, it actually triggered the Heratic monsters themselves. This would allow the Heratic player to summon the seldomly seen, Heratic Seal of Sun Dragon Overlord straight from the deck, thus giving them the two level eights necessary to go into those rank 8 XC plays. This Dark Matter version was extremely aggressive and actually specialized in going second. The plethora of spot removal in main deck usually meant floodgates like Vanity's Emptiness weren't going to be very useful. Duelists also packed in options like Book of Moon and Book of Eclipse to deal with floodgate monster options like Evil Swarm Ophion and the Necrozz Genlock. The other variant of Dark Matter Dragon Rulers was so fundamentally different, it was almost hard to believe that they were going for the same end goal. This build was much more normal summon focused and looked to capitalize off the Mythic Dragon engine. The Mythic Dragons had fallen out of favor with the limit to Soul Charge, but Dark Matter made making a rank 8 a win button, so the engine was arguably better than ever. Mythic Water Dragon had always allowed for rank gates when paired with Mythic Tree, but since this version was all about level 8, it could also partner up with Beast King Barbaros for the same exact plays. Furthermore, this variant doubled down on its commitment to level 8 with a Blue Eyes White Dragon Engine and Chaos Emperor Dragon. Both cards were conveniently searchable from Melody of the Awakening Dragon. Draden was excellent in this deck because it meant multiple copies of any of the level 8s weren't necessarily dead cards, and it let this deck draw into powerful floodgates like Skill Drain and Vanity's Emptiness after it had comboed in the Dark Matter Dragon. Skill Drain especially because it actually empowered cards like Beast King Barbaros and it let Dragon Rulers remain on the field to just serve as huge beaters so you could basically just caveman Yu-Gi-Oh the hell out of your opponent. Another great aspect about this version was that it was basically immune to things like Genlock, Evil Swarm Ophion, and opposing Vanity emptiness. That's largely because this build in particular wisely main decked copies of Mausoleum of the Emperor. Not to mention, Terraforming was still at 3 at this time, so there was a very good chance of you getting one of those cards. Mausoleum of the Emperor allowed this deck the ability to easily summon high level monsters, cards like Blue Eyes White Dragon, or Beast King Barbaros with 3000 attack, which of course could easily deal with an Evil Swarm Ophion, or the 2300 defense of Necroz of Colossalus. Translation this particular version didn't have to do anything out of the norm to destroy some of the best and most powerful locks in the entire metagame. By the second week in January, these two versions of Dark Matter Rulers were already a top 3 deck in the OCG, contending with the likes of Necroz and Shadows. The Mythic version placed 4th at the 192 player Kamada Championship, while the Heratic build went fully undefeated and won the 73 person Saikoku Cup and finished 4th at the the Aichi Championship.
championship. It was pretty obvious to see that the deck was incredibly legitimate and one that had to be taken seriously, especially considering that it was far and away the most offensively potent deck in the OCG metagame. This success didn't go unnoticed by TCG duelists who were quite intrigued by the deck but still lacked the critical piece of Dark Matter Dragon that was necessary to make it work. As fate would have it, Konami TCG had a pleasant surprise for the community as we learned that the much anticipated card would be seeing its TCG release in the upcoming Premium Gold Return of the Bling. Despite the clear and obvious success of the card in its subsequent decks we're having in the OCG, there were still some vocal Yugi tubers who questioned if it was too late for Dark Matter Dragon to have such a large impact in the TCG. We know Dark Matter's coming, it won't be relevant because of Necros. Ring of Destruction is 300 times better than Dark Matter Dragon ever will be. Uh, even if the card did get the Erraticus, it's still a massive blowout card. Spoiler alert, they would of course be immediately proven wrong. In the weeks leading to the release of Premium Gold on March 19th, it felt like the hype had reached some incredibly high levels, as TCG duelists eagerly awaited the new strong deck that was going to contend with Necros. This was further bolstered by articles written by Ultra Reality Games, but unfortunately, Konami had other plans. OCG Konami was not oblivious and saw the competitive success and results that the deck had instantly been able to achieve and arguably took the threat a little too seriously. They decided that the Dragon Rulers and Dark Matter Dragon simply could not exist together in the same format any longer and outright banned all four of the big Dragon Rulers on the April 1st, 2015 list. This ban list was leaked just four days prior to the TCG release of Premium Gold and Dark Matter Dragon which was obviously a huge debacle for Konami. Some players immediately jumped off the hype train claiming that there's no point of building the deck if it's just going to be banned in two weeks anyways. Others like myself held out hope that maybe TCG Konami would give us a ban list that offered different banned cards and maybe the Dragon Rulers wouldn't be among them. As it turned out, this was simply wishful thinking as TCG Konami would soon after confirm our ban list with those same Dragon Ruler hits. All bias aside, this was absolutely ridiculous, and I must say even to this day, this decision was asinine. Not only would TCG Konami be essentially killing the Dark Matter Dragon Ruler deck just 10 days after we got a chance to play it, but it was also objectively just a stupid business decision. When the set was ultimately released in the TCG and duelists were able to play the deck, just like in the OCG, both variants were played and both saw immediate competitive success. There were around half a dozen known reports of regional top 8 finishes. Now that might not sound like a lot, but you have to consider how many players potentially scrap plans of playing the deck just because of the impending ban list. In fact, I actually think because the TCG has larger events, we could have maybe even seen more success than it achieved in the OCG. From the short 10 day period that the deck was legal, which included two weekends, TCG duelists showed great innovative tech such as a winged beat of giant dragon, debris dragon, Spell Canceler, and super spicy cards like Prideful Roar. There were never any YCS events that this deck was legal to be played in, as YCS Bochum and Chicago were both held in April at the start of the new format. In the end, I still feel cheated. Not only were we not given a full format to test the limits of this deck and really vet it against the meta as they got in the OCG, but I just felt like it was a huge missed opportunity. If Konami had just delayed the banning of the Dragon Rulers for just a single ban list, then the deck would have been legal not just for multiple YCS level events, but also national season, which honestly could have changed everything about the entire 2015 year and how we know it. I guess this is just one of the biggest disappointments of that year. Anyways, I thank you very much for watching this video. We are now at the conclusion of our Yu-Gi-Oh! story. If you enjoyed it or you learned something, give the video a thumbs up and of course subscribe for more videos in the future.